Work a little bit every day, day after day, year after year, methodically, towards a big goal. And so they attain it. Though the same thing is there in spiritual life. If we work gradually, but steadily, a little bit every day, day after day, year after year, we will certainly attain our goal. Who was it? I think Mark Twain said that men generally hit what they aim at. It just takes them a while. <laughs> so it's, it's not an instant process. Although, on the other hand, as soon as we reach the required level of purity, the changes in consciousness occur instantly. Uh, the thing is, the process to attain that purity is slow because we have so much accumulation of dirt. See? As soon as we accumulate uh, so many material impressions, it's like the intelligence or the consciousness is covered over with dirt. But then if we take the required process, the chanting process, and clean that off, as soon as we remove that dirt, then we get the result. The thing is that our chanting process is not very strong when it's offensive. Uh, in the beginning, everybody's chanting is offensive. Uh, that's why we don't get the result immediately. Actually, the holy name is very powerful and it's certain to give response, to give result. But because our intelligence, because our consciousness is covered, even though the result is there, we can't receive it, we can't see it. We're too dull. So we have to clean the mind, Chaito Darpa the Marjana, huh? by chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then we can see the result. We can see when our consciousness becomes pure. It's not that the result isn't there. The result is there. But our consciousness is too dull <laughs> to perceive it. Mm -hmm. More questions? Yes. There's a question from Swati. Humans, humans are killing other plants and animals, so souls are coming down as humans? This is discussed in Vedanta Sutra. The human souls, when they leave this body, they go by two paths. The pious souls go directly to the moon planet. Uh, sorry, they go directly to the sun planet. And then from the sun planet, they go to the heavenly planets, according to their pious results. And then either they go, continue going up towards the spiritual world, or if they haven't reached final enlightenment, they come back again to the moon, and then from the moon planet, uh, they come back to the earth, take birth as humans again. The other souls, the uh, impious souls, they go directly to the moon planet, and then they go to the planet of Yamaraj. If they have any, the rule is, that if one has both pious and impious karma, that uh, they experience the results of their good karma first. That's why they go to the moon planet, Chandraloka. It's a heavenly planet. It's the planet of the forefathers. Uh, so they go to the moon planet. They experience the results of their pious activities. Then they go to the planet of Yamaraj, where they are punished for their impious activities. And then they come uh, back to the heaven, to the moon, and from the moon, they go to the clouds. Uh, we know the clouds are influenced very much by the moon. Uh, the moon, uh, because of its gravitational pull, it agitates the Earth's atmosphere, and it's responsible for a lot of our weather patterns. So uh, they come through from the moon to the clouds, and from the clouds they fall as rain. And then the uh, water, the rain, gets absorbed by food grains. The grains are eaten by men, and then the soul goes into the semen and is injected into the womb of the mother. 
And of course, all this is, is it's not by chance. You know? <laughs> it's all managed by the demigods who are in charge of such things. So uh, the right soul gets to the right womb to uh, experience the karma that's due to that soul. This is all described in Vedanta Sutra in great detail. Uh, so uh, if you want to know more about that subject, you can read it there. Does that answer your question? She asked, does a seed have a soul too? Yeah. Yeah, seeds have souls because they're living entities. And when they reach the right conditions, they sprout. Plants, animals, even uh, insects and bacteria and like that, they're all living entities. The Vedas describe 8,400,000 species. A lot of those species are categories, what we would call category or phyla, uh, many different species, uh, like the worms. Worms, you know, there's maybe, I don't know, 20,000 species of worms according to the Vedas. All the you know, from big earthworms and centipedes and like that, all the way down to these little tiny, tiny worms that live in your people's digestion, huh? or that, that live in stool. Microscopic little worms. Huh? So, uh, you know, Western science and Vedic science treat uh, species a little bit differently, but it's essentially the same concept. So yeah, all species of living entities are uh, souls. There's a question from Pipa. What to say people who say we are fine in material world and God, and God wants it that way? <laughs> <laughs> we laugh in their face. <laughs> That's a really dumb thing to say. <laughs> That's what I would do. Somebody said that to me. It's like, what? <laughs> you must be on drugs, man. <laughs> well, such a person is, is in such ignorance. I mean, it's just like, they're so dull. They're like an animal. Huh? Pashupaki jure. Huh? Pashanavidare. Huh? That, that people who are like animals or who are almost like animals in the same consciousness as animals, they can't appreciate this holy name. They can't appreciate the process of self-realization. They have no intelligence. Maya ya prakrita jnana. Uh, their intelligence is stolen by illusion. Uh, they're like asses and cows. It's described in the Vedic scriptures. It's described in in, uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam and also in Bhagavad Gita. Huh? Krishna says, they're like asses. <laughs> Those who can't appreciate Krishna's personal form. Huh? They're, like, they're like donkeys, they're like animals. Stupid. What is it about an ass? Why does Krishna use that particular example? Well, you see a, a donkey, they're very dumb and stubborn, huh? thick-headed. It's like you can't train them to do anything. It's, anything they do is all by force. You have to, you have to beat them. Huh? And then they'll maybe do a little work. And they work very hard, like pulling carts and carrying heavy loads, you know. And then at the end of the day, the master gives them a little bit of grass, a little bit of straw. Huh? And they think, oh yeah, this is very nice. But actually, grass is available everywhere. Huh? So similarly, people in material consciousness, they work very hard like an ass because of force. Huh? Their masters beat them. They, they use all kinds of economic tricks to exploit and enslave them, and they're working so hard. And they think, oh, yes, this is very nice. At the, end of, at the weekend, I'll get a little intoxicated, and then I'll enjoy some sex life, and then... Uh, I'll be ready to go back to work on Monday morning. Very nice. <laughs> they don't understand. They're slaves. They're being exploited. Huh? They're being used. 
So just like the donkey, you can't understand, oh, there's grass every, anywhere and everywhere. I could run away and just live in the, in the forest and eat grass, you see? But he's so, he's so stupid, he doesn't realize. So similarly, these, these, um, these people who are like asses and cows and, and dogs and cats, they don't realize that the necessities of life are very easily available. Uh, that God has created abundance. He's given us more than we need. Abundance doesn't mean, like the, the Christians now, they have this abundance theology. And really what it is, is a rationalization for being greedy. I can have more than my uh, uh, quota. And it's okay, because God loves me. Right? Well, this is really dangerous philosophy. Uh, but what abundance really means is that God has created